Rainbow Six Siege has been out now for just over two months and over that time the game has slowly but surely been improving. This week sees the release of a new patch and the first big content drop for the game titled the Black Ice Update. And well the theme is pretty obvious here, you get two new operators called Buck and Frost as well as a new map called Yacht which is set in the Arctic, not really sure what the story was there but if you've got the season pass you'll gain access to the new operators straight away, however the season pass in Rainbow Six is not like it is in other games as the new content being added to the game is actually free, the season pass just gives you a week early access to it. So if you haven't got yourself a season pass you can still have a blast with these operators as of the 9th of February but you will need to buy them with in-game credits if you don't have the pass. So what are the new operators like? Well they're both Canadian JTF2 operators so they're pretty used to the cold you would imagine which is pretty useful when you're called Frost. Frost is a defensive operator and comes equipped either with a Super 80 shotgun or a 9mm C1 submachine gun. The shotgun is actually really powerful, maybe even the strongest one in the game in fact. Don't quote me on that, it just seemed really strong when I was using it, maybe dare I say a little overpowered, especially at range. It actually has a surprising range to it so you want to be careful if you're attacking. The 9mm C1 submachine gun on the other hand is a Canadian version of a weapon tested around the time of World War II by the British Army, it looks pretty cool, pretty different from some of the other guns in the game in fact. Buck is the new attacking operator, he gets two powerful rifles, the C8 and the CAMRS which actually stands for Canadian Army Marksman Rifle System, that's a bit of a mouthful. In terms of gadgets, Frost has a bear trap, yes you heard me correct, a bear trap and these are called welcome mats in game, any player caught in it will instantly be downed and whilst it sounds good in reality it's actually pretty easy to see these things on the floor, it won't catch most people out unless you place it in a pretty tactical position, maybe under a window where people are going to breach or behind a shield and these can be easily destroyed. Buck's gadget on the other side is an underbarrel shotgun on his weapon, a little boring perhaps, maybe, brand new operator, one gets a bear trap and a cool name, Frost, the other one gets an underbarrel shotgun and is called Buck, the shotgun isn't even that good, <laughs> I think someone drew the short straw here. Next we have the map which is a yacht in the Arctic and more specifically Baffin Bay. Is that a real place? Anyway, it's crashed into an iceberg, where have we heard this before, and it's breached the hull. The Rainbow Six team have been sent there to secure the vessel because a submarine has docked near it. The owner of this ship, who happens to be nowhere to be seen, probably Hugh Hefner, must be pretty important to have Rainbow Six come straight out for them. Overall I like this map, it's pretty big and it plays okay with some nicely designed areas and new props. When you place reinforcements and barricades they almost instantly freeze over to blend in with the aesthetic of the map which is a little bit of a problem for me, it just looks a bit too bright and washed out for my taste. I get that we're in the arctic and it's full of snow and ice but the map is so bright it actually hurts my eyes, <laughs> because of that textures also look really washed out and bad in places. I got that feeling when I played this myself and also with some friends who thought the same thing, it wasn't just me thinking it was too bright. A small complaint though on otherwise a very good map and it's also available for free to all players which is great. That's pretty much the new content covered but there's actually some really cool changes in this update as well. Moving on we've got a much needed change to how you select your defensive position in ranked play but let's just cover first how it used to be. You're playing a ranked game and I'm sure you've come across this where your team and probably the other team always pick the exact same defensive spot on specific maps because it just happens to be the best one on the particular map that you're playing on. It leads to a reasonably boring game where you're attacking and defending the same point over and over again. I've talked about this a few times and made a couple of suggestions. Now though Ubisoft have replaced the system that was in before and added a much better one. Defenders can still vote for the position that they want to defend but if they successfully defend a certain position then they can no longer select that position again until they've defended all other positions. If the game goes into overtime though all positions will become available once more. This is a fantastic change in my opinion and it makes the game far more entertaining and way less generic in ranked play. The only downside to this is that at the start of the game when you're 
driving the drones around and looking for which point you've got to go secure it's a lot easier because you can sort of remember which ones that you've already attacked and which ones have been successfully defended but i think for the competitive element of the game and spicing it up a little bit that's a trade-off definitely worth having what's also worth having is that attackers can now actually spawn at different locations to teammates as well before this attackers would all vote and the spawn location would be the location that got the most votes now each player can select a point individually which is great for flexibility and tactics and it actually helps avoid spawn killing through windows and such on certain maps like house. You might notice some changes to your matchmaking rank after this latest update too as the ranking system has had a big tweak. Lots of players will see their rank change instantly, it's actually distributed the ranks far more evenly so you stand a good chance of going up in rank rather than down. As well as the main changes, we also have a lot of other tweaks. Flashbangs are now way more powerful and useful. They've doubled their effective range, in fact. Also, operator shoutouts can no longer be heard by the enemy team, so no longer will the enemy be able to use that to gain your position. Other tweaks as well, like the reduced visibility of bullet trails for weapons, as well as reduced noise levels from some gadgets like mutes, for example. Oh, and finally, we can see the map and game mode listed during the planning and loading screens, so you can choose your operator based on which game mode you're playing. Don't forget the new weapon skins as well, gotta have some of those. Overall, there are some really good improvements in this patch that'll make the experience much better. The operators might be a little underwhelming, the weapons are pretty good, but the gadgets not so much. However, I do have to say that this patch has brought with it several game-breaking bugs that must be fixed in a timely fashion. There's a massive thread on the Rainbow Six Siege subreddit right now that documents most of the biggest ones and here are just a few examples. Player models glitching and not representing the true position and orientation of them. Hit registration problems, melee hits not registering, invisible barricades and castle walls, invisible cap can laser trip wires which becomes very infuriating and a whole host more. Hopefully the dev team can get these bigger problems patched in a timely manner and to their credit, up to this point they've been doing an excellent job of communicating with the players and releasing patches to fix the glaring issues at hand. And that's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this little update video, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching guys, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs down if you didn't and I'll see you in the next one.